How's it going, everybody? So today we're going to be talking about the uh, Bosch two and a quarter horsepower router. Um, this is the one that actually has the uh, fixed base and the uh, plunger. This is the combo. Specifically, the model is one six one seven EVS PK. So we're going to open this up and we're going to see what we have. Before we open this up, um, if you don't understand what a router really does. Everything that's wood trim within your house, picture frames, um, cabinetry, uh, shelves, things that have certain designs, to the, especially to the edges, um, those are all done by routers. And these are called uh, bits right here. And what these bits do is they fit into the collets of the actual router itself. And they make all these different designs. There are so many different types of bits out there to make different designs. What you can also do is you're make you make like something that's called a dado cut and basically what it does is it joins two pieces of wood together in a more solid and cleaner finished looking you know project instead of just nailing or screwing two pieces of wood together you can actually fit one within it, within another so those are uh little things here and there that are I mean, very small things that a, that a router can actually do it can do many many things but um, just in case you were unfamiliar to, unfamiliar to what actually a router does, go around your house and look at all the picture frames, look at all the edges, look at the trim work that are, that's done around the framing of your doors. That is all done because of routers. So I'm pretty excited to use this thing. Um, I have yet to use the Bosch one, but we are going to open this up and see what it does. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, start taking this thing out. It comes, first off, the case itself is extremely durable. This is some hard plastic here. It's not going to bend or crack or anything on you. This is great to make sure that your tools are protected. Nothing cheap, no soft cases. Awesome. All right, so let's get this thing opened up. Ooh all right so first thing we're gonna take out is the fixed base these things have some good solid weight to them the whole base portion the framing of it is made out of aluminum so this thing has a little bit of weight to it but it's going to be very durable All right, so let's go over the uh, fixed base one first before we go over the plunger. Fixed base comes with the wooden knobs. Very, very comfortable to hold on to. Um, you're gonna have a speed adjuster here. It's, num it's numbered from one to six, and that is going to be your RPMs, and it does go up from 8,000 to 25,000 RPMs, um, depending on the the uh, speed adjustment you have here now the reason that you want the speed adjustment is just based on the size bits that you're actually going to be using so just keep that in mind um, when using uh, you know larger bits or smaller bits you're going to be concentrating on more on that speed portion so that it doesn't chip away your wood in the wrong way um, has a little <laughs> micro adjuster here see how easy this thing is to turn okay we're going to turn it from the bottom base portion has a good little micro adjuster here. Taking this thing on and off, out of here. Should be just a click of that. All right, so we're pushing this portion in right here to take this thing out. Gotta get a little turn, a little twist, and it comes right out. You can see we have our collet right here on the bottom. This is where your bits are going to go into. 
I believe this is a quarter inch and a half inch. Has that ability to do both of them. I'm not quite sure if that says anywhere on here, but I believe that it has the ability to do a half inch and a quarter inch. Yeah, here's the collet right here for the quarter inch. So it looks like a half inch is already installed on there when it comes in, but this is the quarter inch collet right here for uh, the different types of bits. You have many choices of bits to choose from. Um, this is the skill set that I purchased. It was on sale at Lowe's from 60 some dollars to 49 I believe. Um, so I did purchase this one. The Bosch uh, bits are pretty expensive and I will be investing in those soon, but at the time when I wanted to just get this router and try some, try it out, um, I purchased this set. Um, I know that I had, this set has the bits that are needed um, for a majority of jobs, but I wanted to uh, at least try it without spending too much money on the actual first time using it. So once I see how these work, and Skill's a good brand, so I'm pretty sure that these bits are gonna do just fine, but once I see how this thing starts moving and what I'm gonna be using it for, um, I'll start investing in specific uh, bits in order for that to happen. So again, your the bot all all your bits here are sized to you know quarter inch, three quarter inch, those kind of things when it makes the cut. However, the base portion, which we're going to show you in a bit, the base portion has a different thickness. Some bits have different thick, different thicker. <laughs> I can't even talk. Sorry, some bits are thicker than others and uh, on the base portion that actually goes into the collet. So you have a quarter inch and a half inch. First off, this thing is awesome because it can accept both of them when some routers only accept a specific size. So you have to be very careful with that, especially when you're purchasing your router or purchasing the bits, uh, purchase them together. If you just purchase the router, you can figure it all out and you realize, okay, well, I, I can only use quarter inch bits, then that's what you're gonna have to purchase. Um, same thing goes for the half inch bits. So just keep that in mind. Um, but this set right here, you can do both of them. So it doesn't really matter what bits you buy. It comes with the other one, the, th the quarter inch. All right, so changing these actual collets out is extremely easy. It's just turning it off. Turning it till it comes off. Just be careful that when these do these things do turn and they come off, don't drop them anywhere. This is your tool and you don't want to replacing you don't have to be replacing things just cuz a little mistake. So Here's your uh, quarter inch. This is the half inch one we just took off and then you have your quarter inch. The quarter inch should fit just as well as the half inch. All you gotta do is turn it on like a screw. All right, so once we have that collet on, let's go ahead and see what actually comes with the hardware itself as well. So let's move this thing out of the way so we don't knock that over. Move this, and we're gonna be moving this as well just for the time being. There's uh, two packages that come in this box. One specifically is the uh, quarter inch um, collet there. And it looks like we have some screws here. Now, I'm not sure if these screws are specifically meant for anything on the tool quite yet, or if they're going to be meant to be able to attach this to a table. So we'll find out what these screws go to. There's two sets of, of bags two bags of four screws in each one. So um, looks like the fixed base has a couple holes for some screws and attaching some sort of um, guides and stuff like that. To this. Opening this bag up, looks like we have some wrench wrenches here, two different sizes, some screws, additional screws, and an adjuster here. This adjuster right here, This adjuster is pretty cool because it actually gives you the ability to adjust the uh, micro adjuster here when it's sitting on a on the bottom portion of an actual bench. And all we're going to be doing is using this, placing it in the hole, and you can make your micro adjustments with this tool. Of course, I don't have the uh, actual bench right now to 
be able to show you that so I do apologize for that portion but um, if you review over this stuff and then uh, your new table and things like that it's gonna be able to uh, explain how you can use that all right so opening this portion up here we have a looks like a glass protector I'm going to assume it's going to be for the plunge yeah so it's going to be for the plunge router portion the plunge base we'll put that on later all right so I'm going to take these collets off right now so this is just a hand adjustment here but when you actually put the collets on you want to make sure one thing is that you are not tightening this just to check it out to see how it works so basically what you're going to do is let me put this down here when I'm not going to do this yet because it will ruin not ruin but it has the ability to cause some damage to your tool if you don't do this if, if you tighten your 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 actual router on the collets without a bit inside of it it has the ability to uh, ruin the actual machine itself so the tool so when you actually put this on What we're going to be doing is one of them is going to go here, one wrench here, and the other wrench to the back portion. And then you're going to be tightening this up in this manner. Now, you don't want to do that when you don't have a bit inside of it. So I tighten it just a little bit, but not just to be able to show you what it does, but I'm not going to over tighten this thing. Um, you don't want to ruin your bits or this, this machine itself. So make sure that you, when you are tightening this thing, that you are specifically doing it with a bit inside of it. Looking at the two collets that come with this package, this uh, combo here, you can see the difference in the sizes. Half inch and your quarter inch. So they are made the same in diameter, however, the inner portions are different. So this one's obviously smaller, it's going to be your quarter inch, and this one's going to be bigger, it's going to be your half inch. So when purchasing your bits for the router, you want to make sure that you read what it has on there. On the very top right here, it says it fits all quarter inch collets so just remember this is called a collet here so this look for the actual size that's going to be able to fit your router this one obviously like I explained before except both half inch and quarter inch so we'll be just fine with these ones now looking at the designs that these router bits can do you can see that it actually shows a, a picture of what each bit does so looking at, you know, you could do some dovetails. Um, not sure if it actually shows dado cuts on this one, but there are bits that actually can do dado cuts. Um, and then you have your, your edgers. So you these more bit looking as like a drill bit looking shape ones. Um, these are the ones that are gonna be cutting your inner portions of your wood when you join two pieces of wood together. The more round shape ones are going to be doing your outside edges as if you're going to make a trim cut, a nice design on the edge of your actual wood. When the inner, the, the longer, more narrow bits are gonna be cutting, cutting, making dado cuts or dovetails or inside of the wood in order to join your actual pieces together. So as you can see, we already took this out of the actual packaging, the box itself that it came in. Um, awesome looking little case, I love it. Um, you're going to be lifting this thing up here and you can see all your different types of bits that you have. One cool function with this is that you can actually lift them this way. So if you're laying this flat on the actual table, in order to get these out, obviously you got to be able to lift that, but I'll try to do this without causing too much damage to the box. You can see how nice this looks and just make sure you obviously close that up before you close the case again all right so let's go ahead and insert our quarter inch collet 
Just like before, we're going to twist this thing on, make sure it hits all the threads. All the way down to your hand, can no longer tighten it. And the actual base portion starts spinning on you. Just go ahead and place your collet in. I mean, your bit into your collet. Grab your two wrenches. Placing this thing back into the actual base portion itself, you're gonna see arrows on both sides of the actual tool itself. There's an arrow on this side and an arrow on this side. This, these arrows have to match up specifically with this arrow when putting it in. Then you're gonna do a little twist and it's gonna go in. Um, but the reason they have two arrows on either side is just for your own preference to whether or not you want to have the switch on this side or if you want to have it on the left side. It just depends on what, what you want specifically. So I'm going to go ahead and insert this in this way with my switch that's going to be on my right side. Once you have that in, give it a little twist and it'll go in. All right, so for the micro adjuster, you're going to be able to turn this either way, okay? But I want you to sh I want to show you the bit and how it looks going up and going down. You can see with just the fine adjustments, the way you can set this thing. Awesome little feature here with a small knob rather than around the base portion itself. So this thing is ready to go. Um, I'm not quite sure if this arrow, actually we, we have to tighten this thing up. All right, so once you have that locked in place, make sure you lock it back in and that way this thing stays. Um, this thing is ready to go right now. One thing I wanted to explain to you, and I'm not even sure if this is what the arrow's for, but the way that the bit turns, so the bit's gonna turn, if you're looking at it from the top side down to the bottom, it's going to be turning in in a, in a clockwise uh, motion. So the, there's an arrow that is placed right here on the base portion of this. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, I hope you guys can, but I'm not sure if that arrow is specifically to remind you of the way that the actual bit is going. If it is, awesome little feature that it has. Um, and as explained before, if this, this is the portion right here that can actually mount to the bottom of an actual router table. Once you have this thing in place, um, you're going to be able to use this tool. You're going to stick it in this hole and you're going to be able to make your adjustments. Look at the, the knob here turn itself. That's the way you make your adjustments on the table when it's laying this way on a router table. All right, so I just plugged this thing in right now to give you an example of what it's gonna sound like when it turns on. So when you're actually ready to actually route, make sure that you take this portion off, squeeze the tab in the back, and give it an extra push down. Lock it in place, and it's ready to go. You can make your, fi your uh, fine adjustments here with this thing, um, and it's ready to go. All right, once you have this thing set up, let's see what it sounds like when you turn it on. Can adjust the actual speed. So when actually taking this thing out to fix it into the actual plunger, just unloosen that portion, squeeze this trigger in the back and give it a couple turns, pull it a couple turns and it'll slide right out again. 
and it's ready to be placed into the actual plunger. So here we have the Bosch plunger portion. The same idea when placing it in, the arrows have to meet up to whichever side you're putting them into, whichever side you want the switch on. Um, this one specifically, I would recommend that the switch be on your right side. I don't think that you're going to want the power cord this way, so just make sure that you actually have the arrows connecting together. Unstrap that one, place it in, and give it a couple turns until it fits in. We don't have a separate push button here for this one exactly. Lock it in place. And you can see your switch is on this side. So these two Bosch's are meant to be offset. That way you can have access to your actual switch. When you want to plunge something, this is not the bit we're going to be using, but we have it on there right now. Um, but when you want to plunge something, you have a safety device right here, basically a lever that's going to allow this thing to go up and down. When you activate this lever, you can actually push this thing down. When you let it go, it's going to remain in the position that it was in. In order to get this thing back up, all you have to do is push the lever again, and it'll come right back up. So just make sure that when you're actually letting this thing go, that you're not just pushing the lever, it's going to pop right up on you. So make sure you have a good grip on it. That way you don't ruin your tool. We also have a guide basically telling you in inches and millimeters here the um, actual depth that you want this plunge to go down. So this is an actual guide for you. So then you, depending on the size wood or the size cut, the size dado cut you want to make or whatever the case is, you're going to know that once I have this thing set in place, when I go down, the plunger portion is only going to go as far as I have this set in. So make sure that you do learn how to use this portion because this is a very, very specific portion needed for dado cuts and the depth of the actual cut that you're making. So, I mean, you can see that this thing easily turns. It, it has a screw on there, which almost looks like you have to unloosen it in order to make it work, but that's not the case. The screw is set in place and all we're having to do is turn this thing around. So just play around with it and see, uh, see how you like to actually get this thing to work for you. Also has ability to put some guides in here and stuff like that. So thing has a lot of features and it's almost impossible to cover over everything right now. But once you purchase this, you can, you can see it for yourself, all the different types of things this thing can do. And just to take this thing out of its actual casing itself, I'm going to do the same exact thing. Unloosen it, get a grip on it, pull it, turn it, and it comes right out. As brought out earlier before in the actual opening unboxing portion, this clear plastic portion came with this and all this does is snap into here. And that way you have your cover right there, your guard. Make sure you keep all your uh, screws and all the hardware that it came with um, just based on the fact that these are going to be used for, you know, your guides and things like that. And once you purchase your guides for this product, um, you're going to be able to use these screws. We could, you could place these screws in now, but um, you know if you just want to keep them nice and new and don't let, don't let any like dust or, or wood chips or anything get inside of these screw holes, um, just keep them in the package until you're ready to actually use them. All right, so quickly going over the actual casing portion itself, the case that it came with. Awesome case, by the way. I mean, this thing fits all your tools that are needed for this actual router. Everything has a design on it to show tell you where it goes. Um, the one thing that I did not find the design for, however I figured it out, was the extra collet. Between the two wrenches, I was looking through all these different holes and trying to figure out whether or not it's supposed to stay in one of these areas. Um, but between the two wrenches itself, there's a little hole right here for your collet to fit in and not move. It goes a little bit left and right, but it's going to be a nice secure hole, a hold right there. So um, just make sure that you're not putting it in it with this side up you don't want to damage this 
So flat side up and that way nothing can damage that. Has a place right here for uh, additional bits. Looks like this is where your three, your quarter inch uh, bits are gonna hold in here, as well as your half inch bits right here. Now, all right, so my recommendation is if you're actually traveling with this product to go to a job site or something like that, you can put your bits into these areas, but I would recommend traveling with the cases. And the only reason I'm saying that is this case is actually built to hold these routers, router bits. Um, the reason the, these bits will last you a long time if they're taken care of. The reason that bits really get ruined is if they start hitting each other. So you want to make sure, I mean, these, these cases right here, they're proportioned well enough, they're portioned out that you can see that there's a gap between, between them. And they're not going to hit each other within this case. You don't want any metal type of object when you're placing your router back into the case for instance you don't want any type of object actually hitting this so would i keep these in here no but i mean it's an awesome feature to have but i wouldn't keep my router bits in this case itself i'm going to keep them in the case that it actually came with so within the box from the unpackaging itself it came with the two wrenches which fit in this area the extra collet which fits in this area your adjuster for your, your micro adjuster. Let's see if I can get this angle. I'm not sure if you can see that with the glare or the sh the shade, but it fits right here. Let me see if I can get a, there it is right there. You can see how it fits right in that spot. And your manual instructions fit into this slot right here. And it also comes with a couple different uh, slots here that you can use when you purchase additional parts which I find pretty awesome you can see here it has the design and then the ability to fit something else right here I find that pretty awesome because obviously this is the starter package of the actual Bosch combo um, but when you want to purchase additional parts and tools and hardware for this thing this case right here is meant to actually hold those so that's an awesome feature from, from Bosch themselves. All right, so let's give this thing a little test run here. Make sure you have your uh, eyeglasses on. Extremely, extremely smooth cut here. Let's take a look at it. So you can see how beautiful this thing cut this out. I cannot wait to start doing some projects with this thing. Look at the design. I mean, even just this small little nothing design. I'm not gonna even lie. This is like a nothing design on here, but regardless, imagine this on the end of a coffee table, on the end of a cabinet, on the end of an entertainment center that you're building. I mean, just look at that thing. What a difference in making a design with a router rather than just slapping a piece of wood up on something and nailing it together and screwing it in and saying it's done. 
This is where you make your actual art. Smooth as can be. I can't wait to start doing some projects with this thing. All right, guys, and there you have it. That is the Bosch uh, combo set with the fixed base and the plunger, the uh, two and a quarter horsepower model. Um, exact model, exact model is 1617 EVS PK. Um, I recommend this product. It is nice. I mean, everything about this, there is nothing that this tool does not have or cannot do. Um, this, the way it's built, the feeling of it, everything about it just feels like you're a professional worker. Um, I do a lot of just do-it-yourself home projects, you know. Um, I can't wait to start working on this. That that one cut itself made me very excited to start some projects. So, in all honesty, you know, I, I would recommend this. I know that the, uh, the price is up there with these things, but if you're going to invest in a router, you know, and... I mean, if you need one right away and all you have is $100 on you, you know, then you're going to have to go with what you can get. But if you're actually anticipating in a good, solid workmanship, work project, you know, doing something, woodworking, save your save your money. It's going to be a little bit of extra time to have to save that, but save it up and purchase this model. Um, it feels great just using... Um, the uh, the router itself it's not too too loud. I didn't even need earplugs. I mean, yes, it's you should be using earplugs when using any tor any sort of uh, of tools um, that are powered up. But regardless, this one didn't need it. Didn't lose my hearing. No buzzing in my ears. Nothing. Just always make sure you're using eye protection, though. You don't want any little chips of anything to get into your uh, into your eye there. But my recommendation on this tool, yes. So. I'm going to be doing some projects with this thing in the next couple months. Um, please subscribe so you can see what I'm going to be working on with this thing. But hopefully this gave you, you know, an idea of what this actual tool can do and the way it's built and everything like that. So if you have any questions, I know I couldn't cover every single thing that this tool can do. But if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will try to answer them for you as soon as possible. So thank you very much and have a good one.